If you're a regular here on The Prepper Historian, you already know this channel is built on hard, overlooked truths from the past. Tools, tactics, and technologies that kept real people alive when the stakes were highest. And if you're new here, subscribe right now, because today's topic is the kind of thing you won't find in a typical documentary or survival guide. We're digging into a piece of forgotten maritime survival gear that saved thousands of shipwrecked sailors, but almost never gets discussed. The smokeless, flameless lifeboat stove. For the next minute, stay with me, because what you're about to hear is not only a remarkable slice of history, but something you can actually use in a modern preparedness plan. In an era where survival tech changes monthly, this is one device that proves older doesn't mean outdated. It means field-tested, under extreme conditions, with no room for failure. Why this stove mattered so much to sailors whose lives depended on stealth and efficiency. The flame-free lifeboat stove wasn't invented for convenience. It was designed because open flame on a confined vessel was a death sentence. Lifeboats before the 20th century often lacked any heating method at all, so cold rations and freezing nights were the norm. But once shipping expanded and long ocean voyages became routine, maritime authorities realised crews needed a way to heat water, melt ice, warm food and treat hypothermia survivors without creating a fire hazard. So, this led to the development of compact chemical and fuel tablet stoves that produced heat quietly, steadily and crucially without a visible flame. Their job wasn't to cook feasts, it was to keep human beings alive in situations where, honestly, one mistake meant the sea swallowed you. The brilliance of these stoves lies in their predictability. They didn't flare up, they weren't sensitive to wind, and they didn't throw sparks. For sailors floating in the middle of a storm, that reliability was its own form of life insurance. Many accounts from the North Atlantic, especially between the World Wars, describe crew members using these stoves to heat broth for injured survivors or warm up signal cans that required heat to activate. That steady heat source often made the difference between a crew arriving alive at rescue or never arriving at all. So, understanding exactly how a flame-free stove produced heat without the dangers of combustion is, well, pretty fascinating. These stoves relied on a category of fuels that burn internally, which means the reaction happens inside the fuel mass, rather than producing an open flame. Hexamine tablets, sodium acetate mixtures, and early solidified alcohol blocks were, you know, quite common for this purpose. When ignited, they create a slow, controlled smolder that radiates heat, but never produces the flickering flame you'd associate with campfires or kerosene burners. It's a subtle process, but so much safer. For historians, the key point is this. The design intentionally eliminated the three classic dangers. Visible flame, soot, and excessive oxygen demand. A flame-free stove stays oxygen efficient, which really matters when you're in a cramped lifeboat where every breath counts. You could hold your hand just above the fuel and feel this uh, really intense heat, yet the surface would look completely still. To a passing ship or enemy vessel, absolutely nothing would betray your presence. During wartime, that kind of stealth was honestly life-saving. 
Merchant sailors in the Second World War often used these stoves to avoid giving away their lifeboat position to patrolling submarines. Heat without visibility wasn't just a bonus. It was the only safe option. So, what can modern preppers learn, and why does this sort of forgotten tech still deserve a place in your kit? Now, let's bring this back to you. If you're a prepper or historian who takes fieldcraft seriously, this stove actually offers three lessons you can apply today. First, silent heat is sometimes more important than powerful heat. If you ever find yourself needing to keep a low profile, whether you're camping, escaping bad weather during a power outage, or just trying to avoid drawing attention during civil unrest, staying warm without broadcasting your signal really does matter. So, a modern Esbit stove or chemical heater, you know, works on the same principle as those old lifeboat units. You can warm up meals while producing almost no signature at all. Second, and this is really important, reliability beats sophistication every time. The lifeboat stove had no moving parts, no valves, nothing that ever needed maintenance. It just worked. Wet, cold, salty, or even wind-blasted. Recreating that mindset today, well, it means choosing tools that aren't dependent on electricity, can't clog, and don't care if conditions are perfect or not. Honestly, a simple metal frame and a fuel block can outperform modern gear when things truly go sideways. Third, consistency saves energy. Lifeboat crews often heated water gradually, adding small amounts of melted ice instead of burning fuel, trying to force a strong boil. That principle still applies, you know. If you're using a low flame or flameless system, pace yourself. Warm food slowly. Heat your water in stages. That technique stretches your resources and mirrors what sailors mastered through necessity. To make this practical, try a simple test at home. Take a solid fuel stove and prepare a basic ration like oatmeal or soup using only one fuel tab. See how long it lasts, how much heat you get, and how you'd adjust your routine if the tab was your only heat source. The exercise teaches the rhythm those sailors depended on. Steady, quiet, controlled use of finite energy. Why preserving this knowledge keeps history alive while strengthening our preparedness? Studying tools like the flameless lifeboat stove isn't nostalgia. It's recognizing that survival is a universal human experience. And honestly, the old solutions still carry wisdom we shouldn't lose. Maritime crews were some of the most resourceful survivors in history, and every tool they used was refined through real crisis after real crisis. When we take their forgotten gear seriously, we're not just recalling artifacts. We're learning survival techniques as clean and effective today as they were a century ago. If you want more deep, useful breakdowns like this, real history with real applications, subscribe to The Prepper Historian and share this guide with someone who appreciates serious survival knowledge.